Macarion to Stokes, who's onside. Wagner! Here's Sims. It's a good serve this from Southampton. They could finish the job here. It's Shane Long. Right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Saints FC podcast. Um, it's John here, and I am absolutely delighted uh, that I've got Ben back with me. And yes, uh, you're absolutely right. If I've got Ben back with me, it means that we're going to be doing another Ultimate Saints 11. And um, this uh, this episode, I'm really, really excited about. I am probably the perfect age to be... Uh, a fan of this guy. He's, he's a superstar in my Saints supporting um, lifetime. Uh, it is none other than James Beatty. Um, welcome, James. And Ben, thank you very much for, for coming back and doing another one of these for us. Good evening. Yeah, happy to be here. Hi, James. How are you doing? Yeah, very, very good. Thank you. Um, yeah, as I, I pretty much echo what John said absolute icon for me when I was a Saints fan going to St Mary's in the early 2000s that was my peak Southampton supporting timeline and uh, yeah you were you were sort of number one on, on my uh, players list at the time. Oh thanks you too you made me feel really really special. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. it sounded totally genuine there as well James. No no it's nice nice introduction I'm just uh blushing a little bit here but yeah thank you very much it was a pleasure <laughs> <laughs> are you still following the saints closely yeah i follow them yeah i get to um i get to games whenever i can um obviously if i'm if i'm working it's more difficult but uh you know i'm follow i'm following the progress um and they, they're doing excellently at the moment um i'm trying to get my two sons one sports Man United and one sports City, but they're slowly starting to support Southampton, having had it drilled into them, you know, every day. <laughs> so they, um, they're slowly coming round. James, I, I've always wondered, because obviously you, you um, uh, grew up in the, uh, in the north kind of west of, of the country, um, and you've played for lots of different clubs, uh, you spent most, well, the largest chunk of your career at Southampton. And I don't know, I've always just felt that you seem like a Southampton guy. And the fact that you're, you're telling us that you're trying to persuade your kids to um, support Southampton. So why is it Southampton or, and not you know Blackburn or Everton or Stoke or, or Sheffield United? What, what is it that... Um, well, I, I had, you know, some of my best years that living down here. Um, it was the first time I'd moved away from my parents' house. When I came down, I was 20, um, and it was, you know, living by the sea, the, the club, um, the weather. I met my wife when I was playing down here. Um, you know, we live in Southampton still, um, even when I'm working and um, if I'm renting wherever wherever I am. And, yeah, I just think I'm a an adopted South, you know, person from Southampton and it's a it's a great city it's got you know lots of potential the the football club is something obviously that's close to my heart I've got a great affinity with the fans um and you know I like I like to see the club doing well of course um I think when the club when the club's doing well on the pitch then the the city's really vibrant um so yeah I think it's just, yeah, my, my family live here and it's, um, it's well, it's my, it's my home now. So that that's the way I see it anyway. And, uh, you know, long may that continue. Yeah, and you, you rightly said the team's doing really well at the moment and it certainly makes a difference um, to the city. 
like how what do you make of Harson Hootel in the team at the moment and how much would you have loved as a player to have been playing under Harson Hootel? I think it's great. I think, you know, since he, he did a great job when he came in, um, I think we know um, that Southampton recruit the managers based on certain statistics and, and style of play. Um, and he came in and, you know, started off really well. Um, and then it all comes to that, that faithful night down at St Mary's, doesn't it? Uh, when they played Leicester. And <laughs> I think since since that result, there was a you know a lot of ser- soul searching, and I think Ralph's gone back to um, himself. Basically, maybe he, w- he was wandering a little bit. Um, I think by his own admission from interviews that I've listened to, um, and he's just gone back to what you know what he's good at, why he got recruited, and he's playing his way and his style of football. Um, and I think that's showing. Um, in the team, uh, you know the pressing, the pressing much better. There's more um, structure defensively and offensively. Um, and the, you know, I've I've said this uh, a couple of times before. I, I, I've I've never met Ralph to say hello to, but I've I've been at the same events that he's been at, and he's he just seems like a really top guy you know he was um he was at an event down at St Mary's before lockdown and um it was with Mike Osman and Mike Osman was doing his uh his uh, Trump impressions and that and he was he was sort of having a you know digging at Ralph and Ralph played along with it magnificently and I just thought yeah he's a you know he's a proper manager for Southampton what they need he's got the right personality and um He's yeah, he's endeared himself to the fans and the players, and the players are playing for him. And I think I think that that shows his his personality is how he wants his team to play. Um, and as I said, it, they they just go hand in hand, and he's done a, a great job. And and hopefully, he you know he'll stay for a long time. Yeah, so uh, we'll get into your team in a minute. Um, but how how have you found it picking? your ultimate Saints eleven, And have you, have you kind of gone for like your favorite players that you played with or just like favorite players as a fan or a mixture of the two? Like, how has it played out? Yeah, it's been difficult. Um, cause I, I still speak to a lot of the boys that I played with and we've, we've got a magnificent ex saints group. Um, and you know, a lot of them, are, well, all of all of them people on there are my friends. So, um, unfortunately, I can't pick a team with 47 players in it. So, you know, there's going to be some disappointments. I'm sure I'll get some text messages and a bit of banter on, on the group. But but that's all right. Um, but I've gone for a bit of a mixture. I think I've gone for players that I think were, were very good for the club. Um, you know, a few few older players and then a few younger players. Um, but I think there's a good mix in there. I like I like the team anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. And um, so, what formation are you, are you picking? How are you lining up? So, I went through all the players, and I thought the best way to get the, the players on the pitch that I want is to play a four-four-two diamond, or as they call it now, a four-one-two-one-two. Nice. Okay. Did you ever play that when you were? I'm trying to think. In the early 2000s, did we ever play four four two with a diamond? I didn't. I didn't for Southampton, but we we. I did play it when I when I moved. I, I remember playing um, a diamond with with Sheffield United. I think only a couple of times, but I used to like wingers. So any but anybody that watched me, um, yeah, you know, playing up front, I, I was always more effective in a pairing uh, with, with wingers that cross the ball. So, um, but obviously, this is this hasn't got wingers, but I'll, I'll talk you through how, how we're going to, you know, attack, attack teams and get out, <laughs> if you want. Cool. Yeah, yeah, no, can't wait to hear it. Um, okay, so we'll start, we'll start with your number one. Uh, who have you picked in goal? I, I think I've got a goal with this one. Anthony Amy. Um, he was 
he was outstanding, was Ante, um, technically uh, as a goalkeeper. Um, and and I remember him single-handedly keeping us in games at, at times. Um, and then he was he was a great lad as well. He was a um, there's someone else I'm going to mention in a bit, but we 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 said um, you call them adopted English, so he he was obviously uh, Finnish, and I've heard the joke about he's not he's not Finnish, yeah, um, but he, yeah. he's Finnish, <laughs> yeah, and uh, he, he was just a great lad in and around the dressing room, real strong character, you know, um, came out with all goalkeepers are a little bit mad, and and Ante was no different, um, you know, coming out with. Uh, Really loud, raucous shouts at times. Um, usually, usually at me on set pieces when I was defending. But um, he was he was brilliant, uh, and I'm sure you remember that that triple save he made. I think it was against Arsenal, um, and that yeah. and that was that was probably you know one of Ante's um, most iconic moments. Um, but yeah, a great lad and someone you felt really safe with in the goal. Yeah, an incredible keeper. Um and we've we've talked about the the game where he almost scored for Southampton. Um John remembers it fondly. I think it's away at Fulham, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. And he hit the, did he hit the bar. And uh yeah, yeah. I, I think he went up for a corner, smashed it against the crossbar and um uh was it Michael Svensson kind of put it in afterwards. But I mean, what what a glorious moment that would have been if he'd finished that one off. It would have been a real peach of a finish as well. I think one that you'd have been proud of actually. I think he, he he would have been going up the pitch, going yes, the Vikings are coming, yes. <laughs> like that. He, he was that he was that sort of character. But yeah, uh, it would have been nice for Antti to score. Um, he had a he had a long kick actually, and I'm, I'm sure he nearly scored from direct from a goal kick once uh, when it was windy and the the wind was running down the length of the pitch. We um so when we had Mick Shannon on, he uh, he he picked Antti Niemi as well, Mick Shannon Junior, I should say. He picked um, Niemi as his keeper, and we talked about how, uh, you know, at his peak when he was playing at Southampton, he probably could have played, you know, for a, a bigger club in a, a higher level. Do you remember at any time when you were there, there was any talk of of Niemi getting picked up by, you know, like a top six club? I'm sure there were there would have been speculation, yeah. But uh, like I said at the at the start, he was he was technically very good. Um, which you know, not having been on this side of the fence, not a lot of keepers are. But Antu was mm. was really, really technically gifted, um, and he and he sort of reminds me of uh, when I went to Stoke and Asmir Begovic was there, and I said to I said to As- Asmir, you know, you'll be you'll be playing for a top top four club, and he was like, no, no, no. But An- Antu was the same. Um, I'm sure the lads were saying that. Um, Hoping that it wouldn't happen because he was our last line of defence and a very good one at that. But uh, I'm sure there would have been speculation about Ante um, when he was when he was performing really well. Yeah, I'm trying to think who was who was he keeping out of the team? Who were our backup keepers at that time? It'd been Paul Jones and Mossy, wasn't it? Oh, Neil yeah. Moss. Jones, yeah, yeah. Paul Jones, another legend. Actually, he hasn't really got a mention yet. I don't think. Uh, maybe on one of the earlier episodes, but yeah. Oh, the legends, Paul Jones. Yeah, John, he, he's uh, very big on the um, you know the fundraising side of of the X Saints, mm. and, and you know very yeah, he's a, a good a good guy, um, and very active in in the stuff that we do uh, with the X Saints. Yeah. How are you going to break nice. it to him that uh, you've chosen Anthony Amy? <laughs> well, I don't know. I'll just wait until he hears the podcast, I suppose, <laughs> <laughs> and then just take. Uh, Take the abuse. He's lucky because when he was on here before, he just did a straight up interview. He didn't have to choose between his mates. So maybe we'll have to get him back to choose his ultimate 11 and then he can potentially get his revenge. Yeah. Well, it, it, I don't know. He, he definitely put me in his team anyway. I kept, I kept getting him his win bonuses. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So go for your back four then. Um, and we'll start on the left, left back. Uh, left back would have to be Bridgie, Wayne Bridge. Um, yeah. Great lad, had a great career. Um, 
was I think was always destined, uh, and I, I think you've seen it on, on, you know, a couple of programs that he's done. His mentality is ridiculous, and he was so focused on uh, his game, you know, his 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 health um, and his preparation. Um, he he was a good, you know, good one v one defender, but he was he was also very good at getting forward. And I think you see with the moves he had in his career. Um, and he played, you know, played for England numerous times. Um, but he he was used to be my roommate, Bridgie, and he's uh, he, he's a cert to go in at left back. I remember we were on pre season once, just 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 before he he went to Chelsea actually, and uh, he, he he couldn't keep still because he he was he knew that the the clubs were talking um, for his transfer, and he was, he kept jumping up and. He's saying, oh, I can't handle this, I can't handle this. And walking around the room and it was so funny. I said, Bridgie, just relax, you know, it'll come. Just just, just relax. And he was going, I can't, I can't, I can't. And he was pacing up and down the room and that. And we were up at St Andrews on pre-season. He was going, oh, I just, you know, I just want it to be over with one way or another. And uh, But yeah, great, great lad and, uh, you know, great character. Yeah, we, uh, we've talked a lot on this podcast about uh, left back being a, a position of strength for Southampton over the years. Um, you know, with with Bridge and him, people before him, but you know, a succession of fantastic, and mostly English left backs as well. Yeah. Since, since Wayne Bridge, we've done pretty well. Yeah, Fran will probably kick me. Uh, yeah, for not putting him in. He's, yeah, he's but... another one. He's another regular regular in the Saints. I think. Yeah, yeah. I think it was it was between. Probably Bridgie and, and and Luke Shaw and Franny. I think Luke Shaw was definitely with a shout, but because Bridgie's my mate, he used to be my roommate. I've put him in there. Yeah. I just looked at looked up uh, Bridges' stats. I just thought he scored more goals for Southampton. He only scored two goals. Yeah, they were once in a blue moon, weren't they? Um, yeah. But he's. I just think his energy and. The way the way he defended, he was so tenacious, and and then he got forward. I remember him crossing a few for me, and he's a uh, yeah. He used to think he was good at free kicks, but you know when when I'm in the team, he's not going to take him, is he? <laughs> well, well, that's what I thought. I, I've got a distinct memory of him scoring he's, a free. He kick. scored one at the Dell, I think, didn't he? A free kick. Yeah. I let him take one. I said, "I'll oh, go on, then you can have then... one." And he put one in. He said, "I'm on them now." I said, "No, you're not." And then I took the next one. <laughs> Okay, so I mean, set, Wayne set Bridge pieces left are back. something that we're going to need to come on to, aren't we? I mean, penalty takers and set pieces. Ben, I, I think you need to make a note for this because just to get me in the mood, um, James, I was watching your um, your kind of uh, great goals for Southampton to a prodigy soundtrack. There's a nice YouTube video of it. And, uh, <laughs> Firestar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, that's the one. There's there's some there's some really great free kicks and some really fantastic penalties, and I know you're you're. Penalty record for Southampton is perfect. So I think we need to find out who's taking pens and who's taking free kicks in your team. Um, well, it'll give uh, one of the people that's in my yeah, team away, won't it? Let's save it for the end. We'll, yeah, we'll go through it. We'll add. That's a good point, actually. We'll add free kick taker to our our list of questions for the ultimate 11 managers. Well, it's all right because it's the same person. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Probably guessing who it is as well, but we'll, I'm sure we'll get there in the end. Yeah. Um, so, okay, Wayne Bridge left back. Uh, who's in the middle? Who are your centre backs? Uh, two centre backs. Um, I'll start with um, the right sided one, Klaus Lundek Um Yeah. Great player, uh, fantastic attitude. Um, Really strong. Uh, he wasn't. He wasn't uh, well. You know, well built Klaus, but he was really long levered, and he was so strong in training. Um, and again, another we 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 used to say adopted English with his attitude. He was just one. You know, one of the lads. Um, but yeah, a very underrated. Uh, we used to say about Klaus. Um, but again, you know, a, ni- a nice guy who's who's been through a lot, 
um, and come out the other side. And he's now doing great work over in Norway and he's doing some work with the Saints Foundation as well, I believe. Yeah, what a legend. He was yeah, he was just a rock at the, the, the centre of that defence for so many years. Yeah, he was, uh, yeah, and, and, and a great friend as well. Um, and yeah, he's a uh, yeah, good lad, Klaus. And, and amazingly, even less prolific goal scorer than Wayne Bridge. Yeah, I think he only scored one, and I, 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 I've seen it recently. I think Southampton, uh, the club tweeted it, and it was at Molyneux. Uh, and I think yeah, yeah. They, I think it was a corner or a free kick, and it got headed down, and he just top it in. And the, the look on his face, he could not believe that he'd scored. I, I remember it, and he was <laughs> we were just running off, and he, we used to call him Silky because he, he was very good on the ball, wasn't he? Um, mm. And... He he was called Silky Dave, uh, and he was just running back, going Silky, Silky, like that, and it was it was great. I mean, he did celebrate like that one, like he'd won the World Cup. It was it was really quite wonderful, wasn't it? Yeah, and and I think it sh- it showed in his celebration that he wasn't used to doing it, <laughs> <laughs> but he was uh, yeah, great great moment for him and uh, for everybody else because we all loved him and. You know, a really good player and a great lad. I think campaign to turn the anniversary of that goal into a, a national holiday for Saints fans. I think. Yeah. Well, when it was, it was. You're right. I think it was on Twitter recently. I think they, I think it was in the last couple of weeks. I saw it again on the. Saints yeah, it made Twitter. it made me smile because I, I, you know, instantly you you just go back to that moment and the just the elation on his face and disbelief. Uh, in the expression and on his face was 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 just class. Okay, so we got Lundek Varm, who's a bit of a, a a bit of a ball playing centre back, but also pretty tough and good in the air. Who is his centre back partner? Um, Virgil Van Dijk. I, I didn't. I obviously didn't didn't play with Virgil, but I think he's one of the best, if not the best, if central defender at the moment. Well, not while he's injured, yeah. but he's just. You know, you you seen straight away that he he was destined to to play, you know, and, and win trophies. Um, such a good reader of of the game. He's got pace as well. I think he's got every every single attribute that you'd you'd say a centre half needs. Um, reads you know reads danger, snuffs it out. Very composed, great distribution, good in the air. Um, and a real calming influence uh, on the defence, and I think we've seen since his absence, uh, Liverpool have suffered a little bit in that area. Is he is he the best player at, that Southampton have had in the in the Premier League, possibly, or there's um, be a few? I'd say I'd say defender. I, I, I did I, I liked Ald- Alderweireld when he was when he was here. I thought he was very very good. Um, but then you know you've got. You got Dean Richards as well. Dino was Dino was a great player. Um he's unfortunately, you know, passed away now, as we know. And uh Michael Svensson, who you mentioned earlier, we, you know, we called him killer. He had the the scariest eyes when he, he saw Red Mist. <laughs> but um again another another real real good lad off the pitch and uh, a very good player. But I just think that them two would make a a real solid pairing. Yeah, oh yeah, I can see that working. Van Dijk and Lindelof might be great. I, I I can really see that one working. I know that there's a lot of Saints fans have a bit of animosity towards Virgil Van Dijk since he he left, and the I suppose the way he played for Southampton in that last half of season upset a lot of people. But we'll always have that um that game against Inter Milan where he basically beat Inter Milan on his own. I don't know what it was with Saints. We, maybe we were starstruck that night, but you know he, we wouldn't have beaten Inter Milan had he not been there. And uh, you know that's a memory that I'm going to treasure forever. Yeah, I think you just you look at uh, Southampton was a, a a really good moment in his in his development to where he is now. Um, and as I said, he's probably considered if he can hit the form that he was showing before. He got injured, um, which was a reckless, you know, re- that reckless challenge from Pickford. Um, I just think you, you know, 
Southampton have just got to take credit for being part of his development pathway. Um, and uh, yeah, real real top defender. It would he would have been one that I would have been um, not worried about, but you know you were in for a tough game if you were going to come up against him. And then finally, right back. Right back, I've gone for Dodzy. He's finally made it into a team. He's been talked about a lot, yeah. but he hasn't been selected. Um, so I'm sure he'll be. I think, yeah, Dodzy, Dodzy was a, a, a great captain. Um, and I say this uh, a lot about the senior players when I first went into the dressing room. Um and they 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 were great with me, you know. Franny and Dodzy, Kenny Moncal, uh, Tiz, they were all brilliant with me, you know. Welcomed me into the club and helped me settle down. Um, and, and Dodzy was was a great captain, you know, uh, really professional and um, yeah, role model for me, you know. When I first went to the club, one of one of many, which I was very lucky to to have. Um, but another great lad. Still, still speak to him um, on on the group and and see him uh, when we, when we play five aside sometimes down at um, Millbrook there and uh, yeah he's he's on his his coaching he was working at the club on it until not long ago but um, yeah Dudsey will be my right back uh, I remember him uh, crossing a few goals for me to score. Um, had great delivery. Um, wasn't as mobile as maybe I, I would have wanted, but that was just Dodsey. He was, uh, you know, he's, he's a legend and um, you know another great lad. And he'd be he'd be my captain as well because he was my captain. So I'm going to put him captain of this team. Really great yes. choice. Um, I've never had anyone swear more on the podcast than Jason Dodd. He's definitely got the um... really. <laughs> Yeah, and it, it makes I, I I mean he was on with Maddo at the same time, so I don't know if they kind of set each other off a bit. But I, just to think as well that he's, he's kind of like head of football at Winchester College, you know, probably one of the poshest places you could possibly yeah. be with, with his accent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what a guy! I hadn't realised actually. I just looking at the stats there. I hadn't realised that he came from Bath City. Like I thought there was a bit of progression. I knew he's obviously from around that area, but I didn't realise that he'd come straight from Bath City into Southampton. I thought maybe there'd been a bit more, a bit more sort of grounding in the lower leagues first. No, no, Dunn did really well, didn't he? To uh, to make that step, I think that's well done. Us six or seven tiers um, came in, established himself, and then you know was the captain for a number of years. Okay, so. We've got your diamond. Who is going to be the holding midfielder in your midfield four? I've put Alan Ball in there. Okay. Um, I just think because you know he's the the youngest member of the the World Cup winning squad. Um, he captained captained England a few times, um, and on the f- few occasions that I, I met him, he was. You know, really, really nice guy, uh, and really helpful to me. Um, and I just thought, yeah, I've got, I've got to put him in there because he's one of Southampton's sweethearts, isn't he? Um, and I think he could, you know, he could, he could sit in front of that back four and, and marshal um, the attacking players that are going to be playing in front of him. Yeah, again, another name that's has come up a few times, but hasn't quite made it into any squads, but. Yeah, he's obviously famous. You know, famously a world class player. Also, great to have a World Cup winner in there as well. In a sense, yeah. that I just think. That's... Yeah, I think that's um, that's that's one of the one of the reasons he's in there. But um, I'll go on to at the end. I'll I'll tell you how I, I want the team to play, and uh, he's he's a big part of that. So, um, yeah, he's he's in there. Cool. And then the the two in front of him. Yeah, so on the left, I've got Gareth Bale. Okay. Um, again, I don't, I didn't play with Gareth, but his his career is, you know, something that he he will be very proud of. Um, and again, being a, a product of the academy uh, down at the club, 
Um, yeah, just a brilliant player. Uh, spent majority of his time at Real Madrid, uh, but went went to Tottenham, and and then obviously impressed enough to go to Real Madrid and had a great career out there. So he's in there. Um, he'll give me energy and and, f- and forward threat. Um, I think he'll be complimented. You know, by the person that's on the right hand side of the diamond, um, and yeah, yeah, just great energy and uh, good legs. Not in the uh, yeah. you know aesthetic sense, <laughs> <laughs> a good engine. Yeah, and someone who's definitely going to be getting getting in behind him and putting balls in the box. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if 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 Bridgie doesn't get forward, what 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 I've said yeah. is. One of the one of the fullbacks can go and provide the width, uh, and then the other one stays um, for the balance behind the ball, so we don't get countered. Um, you, usually, that would be would be Dodzy if if Bridgie's gone forward. But if if Dodzy goes forward, then Bridgie has to stay, um, and the four that will be protecting um, against the counter would be one of the fullbacks, uh, Alan Ball, um, Virgil. Van Dijk and Klaus. You've really thought this through, bit. I mean, you're thinking about how's this team going to play. I think what was it Michael Channon Jr. and Mick Channon, the two Channons, they were both just throwing in whoever the hell they fancied, weren't they? They hadn't really thought of this this balance. I'm, I'm quite impressed, Pete. I mean, this is your that's my, that's your my, that's my job, though, isn't it? I'm not in work yeah. at the moment, but that's my job. Uh. Is it, is it? Is this an advert? Is this... No, it's not an advert. I think it's uh, it's what I love doing, and I've learned a lot over over my career playing, but also in the the previous you know eight years I've been managing first and then coaching. Um, it's something you know you you look at ten names on a sheet. It's not as easy as just naming a team. You you've got to coach the players, manage them. Um, make sure they're okay mentally, physically, and it's uh, yeah, it's what I love doing. Yeah, I mean, it is nice to have a genuine manager on this podcast, like bringing some some actual structure and sense to a team rather than yeah, just picking a load of players around Matt Letizia and hoping that we win. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's um, yeah, there's a there's a lot goes into winning football matches and. You know that's what that's what we want to do. So I want this, yeah. I want them to play to their ability uh, and you know maximum maximum effectiveness. But you've also got to keep the back door shut. Yeah. So who's partnering Bale in the? So on the right hand side of the diamond. Uh, yeah, right. Wide right of the diamond will be Adam Lallana. Yeah. Um. Adam was a young lad, I think, um, when I when I was at the club, uh, when I was a bit a bit older. But he was he was coming through, and um, you know, an exceptional talent made his way into into the first team, and 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 again has had a, a fantastic career. Um, won the Premier League, won the European Cup, um, and a really elegant player. I would say Adam was really balanced, uh, glide, you know, he could glide past players uh, and again, got great energy to go and ha- help support, you know, the front, well, three as it were. But um, yeah, got really good technical ability in, in there. A bit of tenacious, you know, with, with Alan Ball. Um, and yeah, I, don't, I, I was going to, yeah, I was going to give away my next two or three players there, but I thought I'll stop myself. <laughs> I, I absolutely loved watching Adam Lalana down at, um, at Southampton. I just thought he was so fantastic. And um, yeah, in that rise back up to the Premier League, he, he was just a, a wonderful player. I think he got 20 goals in, in one of the seasons um, in League One. And I just, I felt his his injuries kind of got in the way at, at Liverpool. I uh, I always felt like there was maybe a bit more to come from Adam Lallana, and it's, yeah. it's a shame that we never quite saw that at Liverpool. I, I, I know a few, I know a few ardent Liverpool fans, and they loved him. 
you know, when when he was fit. Uh, and like you say, just injuries at the wrong time. But I, I think that he, he speaks very highly of, of Jurgen Klopp and his relationship with him. Um, but yeah, it, it, injuries are, are, are a, a player's probably worst fear, especially serious ones or ones that you can't really shake off. Um, and I think, yeah, you've you've seen, I mean, Danny Ings is one and he's come through a really serious injury. Um, had, the, had the resilience and the strength of mind to to put, put that out of his mind and, and really had a second wind back when he's when he's come, you know, down to Southampton and it's uh it's unfortunate but it it's what it's what you do. You put yourself on the pitch, you cross the white line and um you know that a, a career ending injury could happen at any time. Um but you you know you you want to play football, you love the game and you want to go out there and show people what you can do. But you do run the risk of uh, of picking up injuries, and you know Adam. Unfortunately, at Liverpool, they they sort of cost him um, regular starts. So did you did you get to see much of him like when he was in the youth team? And did you sort of did you always think that he was going to go on and and have the career that he did? And was there anyone else around that time in the Southampton youth setup that you thought you know would would go on and make it on the big stage? There was a. Uh... I, I've got a, a, a little anecdote. Um, it, I, when I when I was playing, we were still at Marchwood. Um, I know they're at Marchwood now, but in the old training ground. Um, yeah. And I'd come in from training, and you'd have uh, like Dexter Blackstock in there, um, a few of the younger lads, and they'd all would try my clothes on and putting my watches on and that. And walking around the dressing room going, oh, yeah, I'm going to have these one day. And I said, well, all right. And I used to talk to young lads quite a bit, um, you know, about if you, if you do things right, then there's no reason why not, um, you know, and applying themselves properly. Um, and uh, Leon, Leon Best w- was was in there, but they were the, they were the sort of three, three or four names that would come up, Adam, uh, Dexter and and Leon, um, but the I, I always remember that they always got talked about. You know, the the, the first team uh, coaching staff would would talk about these young lads coming through, and you'd you'd overhear them and that, and then they'd come up and train, and you're thinking, yeah, you know, they've got got potential, um, but they they also had a good men good mentalities as well. I think again. Because when I went first went into the dressing room, I had such good, you know, role models um, in the senior players. Then I try to do that a little bit for them. And I remember we had the the pastor or, or the father used to come in and talk to the lads. And I said, "Oh, if you want, ever want me to talk to them, you know, and chat to them, they can ask me anything they want, or you know, anything outside of football, and try and mentor them that way, and try and get them on the right path." Um, and try and teach them that, that not everything's going to go your way all the time. There's going to be many bumps in the road, and and how to deal with them. Um, but these, you know, them three in particular had had really good ability, footballing ability. But the mentalities were also, you could see that they had sort of the right mentality to to handle the pitfalls and the, you know, the highs and the lows of of, of being a young footballer and trying to make your way into the first team and and then forge your career for yourself. Yeah, I, I've always wondered about this because um, I don't know, I think if I hit the sort of riches that, that um, professional football players get in their 20s, I'm not sure I would have behaved in a fully appropriate um, manner <laughs> for someone in the limelight. And it's such a, such a tricky thing. I mean, I know exactly what I was like in my early 20s and, um, you know, uh, probably fortunate that I was skint at that time because it meant I couldn't do as, you know, too many stupid things. But I mean, how, how important is it that the youngsters get a chance to speak to the pros and learn you know, how to, to deal with that? Because I know that the Southampton Academy doesn't have any ex-players in it at, at the moment, I think. And I just wonder, are they, are they speaking to the current players to, to get that sort of experience? And how important is that, that, that there are ex-pros in that setup? 
I think it. I think it is. It is important, uh, and uh, it, it's probably more more prevalent now with all the added uh, out. I, I call them outside pressures that the the young players have got to deal with, um, and you know with with social media and and how how we know how that works. Um, it's it must be really you know it must be tougher for the younger lads um because like you you said you know when i when i i wasn't i wasn't a a saint all the time and you know we used to we used to go out uh, a little bit and uh it must just be a nightmare now for for the lads that are coming through like you say there's probably more money in the game now um and and what do they do with it um, but it's having having those role models. I was I was fortunate enough at that time, you know, to have my dad and uh, good friends around me um, that kept me on the on the straight and narrow. But you know, I'm, I'm not saying I made any mistakes or bad choices. Um, I did, but you try and influence these the younger players, uh, especially now. You know, being being a coach, um, trying to make sure that they're doing behaving properly off the pitch and, and, and to represent the club all the time uh, in a manner that, that, that befits the, you know, the badge that you're wearing. Um, and I think one, one of the main problems, not problem, but it, it's one of the main features now is that it, it, people telling them that they're the best thing since sliced bread all the time. Um, and you know this is this is going to go right. I mean, you, you, you know, you're the best player in the team, and then <clears throat> you hear stories of, of of parents, you know, having to go at the manager because they're not picking the son. And and the, the you know the, the when when you're in the game, it's it you you want to be as 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 honest and it as you can, but you, you're so wary of of being brutally honest that. The resilience levels now are, are not what they used to be, and and I think that one of the main reasons for that is, as I say, you've got whoever your network is around you telling you, you know, you're the best player, you're, you're going to do this, you're going here, you go, you know, you're going to go to Chelsea or whatever. And the reality of it is, less than you know, not point not one percent of any of of all the children. That, that try and make it as a pro footballer don't make it, um, mm. and even when you do, the the road is, you know, it's not a a trajectory that goes up at forty five degrees for your whole life. There's there's many ups and downs, and you know, all all sorts of things you have to deal with. Um, so mentality now for younger players. And being able to handle disappointment uh, and having resilience, um, you know, is 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 a massive part of, of any any young player's development. Um, and as I say, the, these were the what that saw what stood out for me with them. Yes, they were good footballers, but they they also knew where they were going, you know, and it, it wasn't going to be an easy ride, and it, there was going to be tears, and there was going to be joy, and and, and trying to remain mentally stable and level through all of that was 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 what that you know what what we were good at um but now it's it, again it's times have changed and, and and the landscape's changed and and hopefully you know the younger lads that are coming through now you know whether it be a club that I work at or I go in to visit that they're getting the right advice from from all angles because certainly they'll be getting it from within the club. Um, but again, it's just the the exterior voices that that can that can uh, you know hinder the pathway. That's that's cool. really fascinating. Sorry, Ben, I've taken James on a on a tangent there, but I'm one I'm absolutely fascinated by. It's really really interesting insight. Yeah, and I think especially at the moment, like there's there's so many players in the big clubs in the Premier League who, you know, were touted as being the next big things, um, and a lot of English players as well, unfortunately, um, and just have never really made it, but you know, are still very, um, you know, the, the the kind of social media 
aspect and the the Instagram lifestyle is a big part of of why they're still you know fan favorites mm. and it's just interesting to see the balance now between you know how I wonder how many of those players actually wanted to re, you know really make it at the top level and and win trophies and how many of them wanted to just you know have a a good you know successful career but also maybe branch off into other things and just become you know a superstar rather than a you know a, a trophy winning footballer yeah um and like you said there there is a lot of examples of, of that um but you know as a as a pure football purist you you what you want to do the the football side of it and then for me everything else takes care of itself whether you want you know commercial endorsements or millions of followers on instagram or twitter if you're if you're doing the business on the pitch that's all going to come anyway yeah well thankfully none of those types of players in this team um so who's uh who's the point of your diamond behind the front two uh, i think there's only one choice and when <laughs> when we play for the ex saints he plays he plays in this position with with me up top um and it's the one and only Matt Latiz. Um do I really need to tell you why he's in the team? <laughs> um I think we've uh, I think we've yeah, we've witnessed it and we've heard people wax lyrical about Matt Letizia. Well, I don't know if you'll have heard this. He he was he, so you've you've seen his video, his DVD, unbelievable. Yeah. He was actually better in training than them you know, really? he, he yeah. He was ridiculous, and again, for me as a young player, I mean, Tiz, you know, Tiz could have seen me as a threat and and been a bit of a, you know, a bit unpleasant to me. But he wasn't. He he was such a good role model, and some of the stuff he used to train, and I was fortunate enough to to see it, was was breathtaking, like literally breathtaking. We you you'd stand on the pitch and go, I can't, no, I, I've not just seen that. Um. But the best thing about it was he would then go and reproduce that on a pitch because it that was his that was his stage, um, and yeah, just a magnificent footballer, um, a really really good guy, and yeah, just just brilliant. What would you, as someone who's played with him, what would you say was the best part of his game? Um, it was just his, 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 his overall his touch was his touch was immaculate. It's one of the best first touches I've ever seen. But it was it was just his aura, his self confidence was, you know. And I, I don't know if you've spoke to Tiz or what, but for me, he just oozed confidence, and and he was willing to try the impossible, but he had the ability to pull it off. And his, do you remember his goal at Ewood Park? The yeah. one where he's he's sort of turned inside Mark Atkins and then, um, you know, forty yard looping shot over Tim Flowers into the top corner. Well, I was I was sat in the stand when he did that, as a Blackburn fan. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> as a, I um, I can't remember what year it was, but I yeah, I, I and I just remember going, wow. That's amazing. And then five or six years later, I walk into the dressing room and he's he's sat there, comes over and you know shakes me hand, welcomes me to the club. So, and then ever since that that day, we've been we've been you know really good friends. And he was, uh, yeah, you couldn't just just from from his ability. Not I didn't you know when you don't know someone as a person, you you would think someone mentions Matt Letizia, you know, you'll be playing in the same team as him. I probably would have said, no, that's not happening. I mean, but there, there seem to be sort of levels to Matt Letizia fandom. So, you know, there's some people who appreciate him from afar who weren't Saints fans who've seen his, like, you know, the 100 best Premier League goals and can see what a player he was. Then there's, like, the Saints fans that watched him a lot and have just seen him do wonderful things. And then there's the players that have that have played with him, like you and some of the others that we've interviewed uh, on this podcast and the way they talk about him and what they've seen in training. And, it's always fascinating me and, and perhaps, you know, apart from that experience you had watching Blackburn, obviously coming from Blackburn and then going to Southampton, 
you know, how, I mean, obviously you're aware of him as a player, but what changed when you went from just being an outsider to then being an insider and seeing Latiz up, up close and personal? Um, well, well, like I said, we, we've got a really, really strong friendship. Um, and, you know, I, re- I respect him massively. Uh, I just, yeah, probably want to disbelief, I suppose. <laughs> um, but, yeah, he, he was... He, it's, hard to, it's hard to describe that because, uh, you know, he's, he's still my friend now. Um, and, yeah, I just, just had the utmost respect for him. Um, from what I'd seen, you know, not just that goal, but him on, him on telly nearly every week scoring worldies. Um, but then to be in the same team as him, uh, although he was, you know, coming coming towards the end of his career. And like we mentioned with Adam, he was he was picking up injuries quite a bit. But his his ability, his natural ability was was just phenomenal. Yeah. And 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 I'll mention it again, his 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 self confidence. because um, he's not he's quite shy, Matt, you know, when you when you speak to him. But he just he, it, that was that was his calling, you know. With a football at his feet, he could do anything. You know, he could he could slot a pass through. He could pick a sixty seventy yard ball. He could flick it up and volley it in the net. It, it that was just you know he was made he was made to be a footballer. And uh, okay, so Matt Letizia behind two strikers. Who are your? Strikers, who the who's the strike partnership? I've gone for Alan Shearer. Now there's there's two two things to this. Obviously, he played for Southampton, but I was a YTS at Blackburn when Blackburn signed him. No, the year after. Um, and again, phenomenal player. When Blackburn won the title, he was the best player in the world, bar none. Um, and again, another, he, he was, he, there was, there was two players at Blackburn at that time. Uh, and I just left school. Um, and there was Colin Hendry who used to, uh, come in and see the boys. So again, it probably, it probably started there and he would chat to us and ask us how we got on at the weekend. And then the biggest star of all would, would come in. And I remember the first time he did it. So we were the way it was structured. Then you'd have you'd sort of play with all the the first year YTSs and then the second year YTSs that have a team, and they were called B and A team. And he he walked in the dressing room. I think it was on a Monday morning, um, and all, I remember all looking round and all the lads' jaws were on the floor because he'd walked in, um. And he just said, oh, how did you get on at weekend, lads? Was it a good game? All that, that. We, we couldn't believe it because he had he was like the superstar scoring goals for the first yeah. team um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and, and really good goals as well. And the fact that he had, he had an interest in, in us and that he'd come in and asked to see how we were and what was the game like at the weekend, we just couldn't believe it. And, you know, he was, he, he was great around the club uh, and again, uh, you know, what better mentor could you have other than an Alan Shearer growing up as a young centre forward? Um, and yeah, he's he's in there for for that reason. You know, brilliant player. Um, and you know, I thought I know he was well thought of at Southampton. Um, started off really young as well, didn't he? Um, but yeah, just he's my sort of childhood hero, so he he has to be in there. I think he was <laughs> seventeen years old when he got that hat trick for Southampton against Arsenal, which is yeah. just astonishing in the old first division, nonetheless. Yeah, crazy. And then he, you know, he went on to have a phenomenal career. Um, but he he was probably the one of the main reasons that Blackburn won the title. Uh, yeah, and obviously being a young Blackburn fan. Getting my first season ticket at seven and following him all over the place, he was, he was, uh, you know, he just pips Simon Garner <laughs> as my all-time hero. And then, who's the strike partner for Alan Shearer? 
I've got to go for Marion. Perhaps. Yes. Um, I remember when, when Dave Jones signed him and he, he was, uh, what was he hailed as? The, the Latvian Michael Owen. Um, and I think he, it, it was his first game he got. Did he get the winner or did he score against um, Everton? He scored two two against Everton, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, but just, yeah, he, he, he came over from Latvia um, and he pretended. So he, me and him used to speak in English and he pretended that he didn't speak English to anyone else, <laughs> which I thought was, was quite clever. Um, but he was, a, yeah, just a, a really, really nice, really nice lad. But he's the only player I've ever seen can run at full pace and change, you know, change uh, his angle by 90 degrees and not lose any speed. Ridiculous. Um, Am I right in thinking that he joined the same season as you? Yeah, right? he joined He, he joined later on, didn't he? Because yeah. he, we were... Was that the Great Escape year, or was it the year the year after? Yeah, it might have been the Great Escape year. Yeah, and yeah, he was he was so tiny and so small, but he was so fast off the mark. You know, first five yards, but then when he got going as well, his little legs be going like Roadrunner, and he, he was <laughs> he was he was really fast. But yeah, some somebody I I, I again. We have a great friendship, Marion and I, and still to this day. And uh, yeah, he'd be, he'd be definitely a threat. So that's that's my team. And he went. He did he go back to Latvia and and he managed for a while, didn't he? he was he was manager of their national team, wasn't he? He was manager. Yeah, I think he's. Um, he went back and uh, I think he did. It's gone to Riga, and then he he, he yeah. was actually na- national team manager. Yeah, yeah. I think I I remember I read an article about him a couple of months ago, um, and yeah, you called him the Latvian Michael Owen. He is just an absolute national hero. Though. Yeah, um, he was he was great. Yeah, what, what a great player! And you know, there's a, a lot of players that you've picked that are kind of the combination of you know skill and talent, but also having the right attitude and heart and he was just he embodied that whole Southampton spirit of the kind of you know never say die bit of a bit of an underdog especially the you know the teams that him and and you played in um he had he had um he had a yeah he had a lion heart uh and he he was quite fiery as well when he lost his temper (laughs) if you you know um but yeah, he was uh, yeah just used his attributes really well, um, and yeah, he was a, he was a you know a, a big man in a in a small body. <laughs> it's quite good in the air though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he was uh, he was very he's a good spot by Dave to be fair, um, and then and then Marion. I remember he crossed one. He, he he used to have two great feet, so he could he could either shoot with his left or shoot with his right. And I remember it, uh, we played Man City up at uh, the Etihad, and it, I think it was one of the first games in the Etihad. And he went he went down the the left wing, scampered um, past one player, and then he just delivered this cross uh, effortlessly right onto my head. Um, and he, he was he was brilliant because he. He'd be. We were we were a good combo because you know I, I was I was bigger. I was decent in the air. He was very quick, so he got onto a few flick ons and and what have you. Um, but yeah, just a real good lad. We had a, we had a, actually at that point we had a psychologist or a sports psychologist, and he made and he pretended to the psychologist that he didn't speak English, right? <laughs> so I remember for a few weeks I had to try and persuade Marion to you know drop the act and just to let him let him know that he did speak English because he just kept saying he would get us together and say, right, talk to each talk to each other and Marion's just shrugging his shoulders and pretending he doesn't speak English. So the sessions were a bit of a nightmare um to start with. But uh I said, Marion, come on, this is this is gonna help us this. You know, he said, oh, okay then I'll I'll 
I'll, I'll tell them I've been taking lessons in English. <laughs> he sort of broke it in, broke it to him uh, about two or three weeks in. But it, it was great. Yeah. So was that when Glenn Hoddle was manager? Yeah. 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 And he, he got this the psychologist in, and he was asking, he was asking, uh, he was saying, Marion, well, what, what, what do you want James to do when you know to to make it better for you when when he gets the ball or when you get the ball? What do you want him to do? And like I say, for the first two weeks, Marion was just looking at him blankly. Uh, uh, but then it, it was it was good because it, it sort of it, it breeds that sort of understanding, and then you get to a stage, you know, where you have a little bit of te- telepathy, and it was um, just breaking barriers, really, between you, you know, and not feeling stupid when you say something, and, and being open and honest. Um, but he, what a character, man! He makes me smile every time I think of him. Was was he the best strike partner that you had? Do you think? Um, I don't know. You know, Kevin Kevin Phillips and and Brett. Yeah. Brett was wow. Brett Brett was such a good partner to have. Yeah. Um, because at that at that time we were so fit that we were, we were playing games and and. You know how they're saying the. I think my record's fourteen point six k in a game, and I was finishing the game and thinking, right, I can I can go and play again, because yeah. Strachan had us had us so fit, um, and that was that was one of our weapons because he we scored a lot of goals towards the end of games because the other team were just so knackered that they couldn't keep up with the running. Um, and it, 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 yeah, Marion Marion was fit, but yeah, Brett, he would run and run and run and run, and Harry, um, and you know, co- cause the defenders a problem, and and sometimes he'd have two men marking him, um, which which left me with a bit of space, a bit more space, um, but you know, Kevin Kevin Phillips was another a great great partner that I had, um. But yeah, Marion Marion just edges it. Nice. That's a very strong side. I'd uh, I'd go as far as say I think that's my favourite side so far. My favourite eleven. I, th- I think it's the strongest one. I mean, Ben, are you going to read it back to to James there? I've got it here. I've yeah, written it down in front of me. <laughs> oh, there we go. True manager stuff. Have you got it on a whiteboard with like little magnets and things, or is it? No, I mean whiteboard's not in there actually at the moment because you're. Yeah. I'm just going to, I think we're just about to move house. So, Okay. So before we go through the team again, then, um, so you picked your skipper already. So Jason Dodd is your captain. Yeah. Um, so who, who's taking, firstly, we'll do the penalties. Who's taking penalties? I mean, Matt Lattis. It's got to be Matt Lattis, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, yeah. Tell you what, Matt Lattis, after an argument with Marion, because Ma- Marion made this deal up, right? He said, he knew I was the penalty taker, but he said, if I win the penalty, I'm having the penalty. And I said, <laughs> no, I'm the penalty taker. And he was going, right, okay, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. And I remember him w- winning the first penalty and he wouldn't give me the ball. And he didn't have a massive argument, but I just thought, you know, when you think back and you just think that was that was his really strong personality if i if i win penalty uh i take penalty like that to me <laughs> i was going right okay mate no problem <laughs> but yeah tizzle tizzle set the penalty but only after a, sh- a short argument with marion <laughs> <laughs> all right fair enough and then and so a new addition to the format uh it, who's the free kick taker um yeah prob yeah be tiz again but I'm sure Gareth Bale would have something to say about that after his, you know, progression and some of the free kicks that he scored. Yeah, no, that's true. Um, okay, and so so you are the manager of this side. Yeah. Uh, which Southampton manager, uh, past or present, are you having as your assistant? Well, this this is going to be interesting. I'd have Gordon this Gordon team. Strachan as my assistant. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that might be a tough, a tough choice because you played under some 
some great managers at Southampton. Yeah, but, I'm also interested it, in that power dynamic between you and Gordon. <laughs> yeah, but this is this is the this is the thing. So I still speak to Gordon now and, and ask him his opinion because I you know I massively respect him and he he was he was the manager that that knew he he got the best out of me um, mm. in in the way that he managed me. Um, and I think I don't know, I don't know whether he'd actually do it. You think he'd do in, real, in real life? You know, I think he might actually. Well, I don't know, but I still I still speak to him now, and he's you know he's 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 still the same and very quick witted, but his knowledge and his experience, um, I think he'd be you know a good, a great assistant, um, you know, to lean on and and to get advice from. I think he'd be yeah. he'd be brilliant, and he and 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 again he he knows me, so he'd. I'm sure there'd be a few arguments, but we'd all be friends afterwards. And uh, yeah, I'm sure that side would do pretty well. That's a very strong, strong managerial unit, I think. Um, and then the final thing that you need to tell us is which kit are you going to be wearing? Um, well, actually, the the kit with uh, well, the first kit I had when when we when I signed for Southampton. Um, yeah. I actually, I used to wear XLs, right? And I got it out the other day. I found a few of them the other day and they are huge. <laughs> they must have been, the, the, the style of kit has, has changed, obviously, hasn't it? Now it's more yeah. fucking lycra in it and, and, you know, figure hugging. But uh, it, this the, these shirts that I used to wear, uh, you know, with 16 on the back when I first went. I think it's a Sanderson one, you know, with the black, yeah. the big black collar. And yeah, it would have been so well. baggy. If it was windy, it would have it would have been like we were doing parachute runs on the pitch. So I wondered, yeah, wondered how we got anywhere at all. But it, it'd probably be that one. Are you still nice. going for the same fit or are you going to go slightly smaller? No, I'm, yeah, I actually, I, I, I quite like, I like wearing... You know, formal gear. I like I like getting dressed up, um, and I try and wear it. Uh, you know, I'm not skin tight, but fitted, or yeah. I might I might I might take it in a little bit at the back, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it wouldn't be as baggy as that. I probably I probably fit a medium, or or even a a, sm- a small. But I, I just do. I, I tried it on as well, and I just think, oh, what, how the hell did I wear this in games? <laughs> so baggy. It's a short sleeve, and it comes down to halfway down my forearm. <laughs> <laughs> Either I'm shrinking, or I was just wearing a hideously massive kit. I think that was just the style, wasn't it? The late nineties. It was just all those baggy shirts. Yeah, but good, you know, good, good memories and. Great kid. Yeah, but horrendous material. Oh, really? Yeah, real, yeah. real uh, n- nipple shredding material. Are you saying as well the change room wasn't smelling too good after a match? Is is that what you're hinting at here, James? Uh, no, I, I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know whether it was breathable. It was big, um, so there's probably a lot of ventilation. So I, I don't know whether the BO would be that bad anyway. <laughs> Right, let me read your team back to you then, even though you've got it written down in front of you. But uh, So you've got Antony Amy in goal. Yep. Um, Wayne Bridge left back. Virgil van Dijk and Klaus Lundekvam in the middle of the fence. Jason Dodd playing right back and captain of the side. Uh, then you've got a, a midfield diamond with Alan Ball as the holding midfielder. Adam Lalana and Gareth Bale as the, the central pair of the midfield diamond. And then Matt Letitier playing just behind a front two of Alan Shearer and Marion Pajas. Um, Matt Letizia is on penalties and free kicks. Um, and you've got Gordon Strachan next to you on the bench and your your team will be wearing the 1998 home shirt, the pony, with the Sanderson logo. Yeah. Are you happy with that? Yeah. Who is uh, Who on the ex-Saints WhatsApp group, who's going to be the first to pipe up that they're not included? Uh, probably be Glenn Cockrell. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, he's he's the skipper, so he's he's skip. Yeah. Um, 
he'll, he, yeah, Glenn, Glenn, another, another great, great man, um, and and you know, respect him massively. But it's a, it's a great group. I'm really proud to be part of it, and uh, they're doing some, we're doing some really good stuff in the, uh, you know, in the community, and and going forward, we will be as well. Awesome. Well, James, it's been an absolute pleasure and and a real kind of you know bucket list moment for me uh, to, to talk to you. So thank you for taking us through your ultimate Saints Eleven. You're welcome. Thanks very much for having me.